car august 28 the fifth death anniversary of slain rationalist narendra davolkar will be marked as national scientific temper day over last month the media has reported cases that demonstrate how absence of rationalist temper or scientific temper can literally be deadly in kerala zidukki a man killed four members of his family in an attempt to gain divine power in moradabad in uttar pradesh a couple killed their 6 year old daughter who had rickets after self claimed godman said that this would ensure that their next child would be healthy in tamil nadu tiruppur a woman died in childbirth because her husband did not trust doctors and decided to deliver their own baby himself following youtube videos this is exactly the attitude that narendra davul got fought against as it turns out it is something the constitution requires every indian to do says article 51 ah it shall be the duty of every citizen to develop the scientific temper humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform the term scientific temper is uniquely indian it also formulated by jawaharlal nehru in the book the discovery of india so we shall try to maintain a scientific temper within ourselves so that we can be more human more scientific and more we can build a more educated society thank you hey what's up yeah i'm fine how are you arpita hmm sounds good ha huh? yes we have not seen each other for a long time yeah tomorrow i'm free but what's plan okay plan is good but but i think i will join next time yeah no actually um, it's my second day so i can't enter to temple yeah i was very excited but i strongly believe that it's a sin because during these polluted days i can't do these things extremely sorry hey nothing like that they are just superstitions there are some scientific explanation behind this ever since we gained puberty and had our first menstrual cycle also known as menarche we would been told by our mothers to avoid visiting temples and touching auspicious things while our periods were going on although it does seem like a superstition practice considering menstruating women as impure creatures it holds a reason behind it exactly the opposite of what we would been thinking for all the while actually in the past women did not have so many options like pads tampons menstrual cups etc for personal hygiene like now so they were forbidden to go out thinking about them but this idea has turned into a superstition and subculture in the rule of time which is not acceptable in the way of progress of modern society the there are still several places in india which celebrate menstruation just like it was done in the ancient times such as rajaprabha or mithuna sanskruti of orissa the rituswuddi or ritukala sanskara of karnataka etc i hope these festivals will help break the stigma or taboo on menstruation in the coming years Snake bites, myth versus reality. Snakes have fascinated and left us intrigued from times immemorial. They are sparkingly beautiful, yet dangerous if provoked. They symbolize life, rebirth, resurrection, regeneration, destruction, and so on. Here are some of the common myths and misconceptions about snakes and how to treat their bites. Myth: Snakes are deadly predators that are out to get you. but in reality bites commonly occur on the arms below the elbow and the legs below the knee in most cases the snake is provoked by being handled antagonized or inferentially stepped on not because it was waiting to strike 
in addition of the snakes bite that occur most of them are from non venomous snakes and few of these cases are fatal meat tourniquets eyes and suction are useful snake bite treatments but in reality these techniques have been sh- shown to lack ek effectiveness when study in a clinical settings because of this you should not perform these unproven or discredited treatments that may cause your patient harm hey good morning guys i just get up yeah oh my eyes do you believe in eye twitching if you believe then i can explain the reason behind that let's start eye twitching is mentioned number of times in hindu scripture and when a god has a twitching eye it often acts as an important omen signifying future events there are many eye twitching superstitions in india depending on religion and religion but there are some common themes many of the superstitions share many indian eye twitching superstitions depended on whether the person with the twitching eye is male or female if your right eye is twitching that is good luck for a man and bad luck for a woman if your left eye is twitching that is bad luck for a man but good luck for a woman there are also superstitions based on which part of the eye is twitching if the pupil of the eye twitches it's a sign of a good luck if the upper part of the eye twitches that's a sign you will soon get some money if the lower eyelid twitches you may soon need to spend money if the upper eyelid twitches you may be receiving bad news soon if the eyebrow twitches you will be receiving good news soon or it may indicate the birth of a child Oh my god see a black cat is crossing the road stop don't cross the way of the black cat so what i don't believe this i am going please don't go wait for few minutes please why don't waste time come let's go exam will start very soon no please i had heard that it is considered a bad omen when a black cat crosses the road I also think something bad will happen today. My goodness, you people still believe in such nonsense. There is no reason behind all this. Believe me. See, one car is passing by the way of the black cat. Okay, let's go now. It is so unfortunate that we have wasted few valuable minutes just for your superstitious belief. How can you say it is superstition? Elders always say that definitely something bad happens. Listen carefully, nothing bad happens. The more you believe in such baseless facts, the more bigoted you will remain. These things are nothing but deep-rooted superstitious beliefs, having no scientific explanation. In future, try not to follow these superstitions, and you will see nothing will happen. I think she is probably right. If we the present generation keep on believing such things then this will never be eradicated from our society in fact we should take the responsibility to explain these things to our elders and others okay okay i understand now in future i shall keep it in mind now let's go first otherwise we shall miss the exam You all know that egg is a balanced food that contains all three nutrients like carbohydrates, protein and fats. So, eggs should always be kept in the list of an ideal breakfast because it digests slowly and keeps the stomach full for a long time. Egg can be eaten even on the day of the exam to prevent early hunger. What are you doing, guys? I am watching TV and drinking tea. What are you doing, Arpita? 
don't tell anything guys grandma called my mom and complain about my cousin sister that she ate eggs today and went to the exam arpita i can't understand what is there to be angry about priti did not you hear it if you eat eggs before the exam you will definitely fail the exam you are in 2021 arpita and still you believe that if you eat egg before the exam you will fail the exam this all are superstitions no no arpita i remember i heard it too friends if someone is allergy to egg then of course she or he should not eat the egg before the exam and any time there is no other reason myths superstitions and more about sneezing sneezing is a universally recognized physical reaction in people but what people don't often know is what sneezing means or what it does to the body in fact myths and superstitions have swirled around sneezing for almost as long as civilization has existed today we would like to go through just a few of the many odd beliefs about sneezing what is a sneeze first let's talk about what a sneeze is a sneeze is our body's reaction to irritates in our nasal mucous membrane when our membrane is irritated our body expels them through a forceful explosive expulsion of air through the nose and mouth our heart will not stop when we sneeze our chest does contract when we sneeze which can constrict our blood flow but it's not nearly enough to stop our heart is someone talking behind our back in east asian countries there's a superstition that if we sneeze someone is talking about us moreover the number of times sneeze is a sign as to what they are talking about for example one sneeze means something good has been said two means something bad has been said three is a sign that someone is in love with them and four is a sign that tragedy will be fall their family still others think that if we turn our head to the right when we sneeze we will have good luck while turning our head to the left will bring bad luck